Hi everyone, it's Serena from Cowichee Creek Nursery. We're here in Jeannie's yard, and as probably most of you know, we had a pretty bad windstorm Saturday night. Uh, you can kind of see her super tunia bubblegum petunias. Look at how <laughs> wind blown they are. And they actually got a bit dry. With all of that wind, you know, the wind really dries plants out. So we're gonna go over how to help your plant come from this and get back to being beautiful. Um, and we're gonna soak it up also. We're gonna do some fertilizing. So to start with, I don't want to give this a really hard haircut. I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. So I'm gonna come in here. You do not have to be very precise on this. I mean, you can come in here and try not, you know, just cut little things down to like that, but it goes a whole lot faster if you just do a quick haircut. I just want to even it out. You know, the other side doesn't look so bad. I'll do a little trimming there just to even it out. We just want to force it to branch out. And when you cut something back like this, you're forcing the growth to come below down into here and send out brand new branches and flowers. So not only will you get more branches sooner and then if you just left it, you'll get lots of flowers as well in the long term. So I'm going to come around here. Some of these branches, they've just blown over. We're just gonna bring them back where they're supposed to be. And just, I'm getting some pretty low and then some I'm just taking the tips off. Don't be afraid to do this. You know, we get questions at the nursery all the time about, well, isn't that gonna hurt my plant? Uh, won't it be better off if I just leave it? And the thing you have to understand about plants is they actually enjoy getting trimmed or pinched. There are certain plants you don't have to do that to. You know, this uh, super tunia, it's a vegetative petunia. It doesn't require you to pinch or deadhead to get new blooms, but it doesn't mean it's gonna hurt it to do that. You know, when little branches break off in the wind or when you do a little bit of this trimming, it really does give it a second life. And you'll be amazed at how quickly this will come back from that storm and look full and healthy again. I'm almost done here. I don't want to do a whole lot. I might come around the other side. I'm going to make sure I get some of the ones in the center so that fills out brand new foliage. Okay, we're just about done here. A lot of times this time of year, you can also notice things like aphids or thrip, maybe mites on your plants. And I'm gonna show you some different products you can use on your potted plants. You know, we talk a lot about different things you can use on your roses. But sometimes you're not sure what to use when you're talking about petunias and other blooming plants for your pots. So there, that looks, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say that looks better now, but it will help it to look better later. <laughs> okay. You know, this doesn't have any bugs right now, but if it did, a couple things you can use for organic gardening, if you want to stick with organic, neem oil is a great product. This is a ready to use product, so you don't have to mix this. It's not a concentrate, it's just ready to go. Twist the little thing, you can spray that. Make sure when you're spraying that you do get full coverage. You want it to be on there to the point of drip, you know, runoff. You want it to be dripping off and make sure you get into the nooks and crannies of the plant. This is another one, Safer Soap. Um, not only will this work for your petunias and your potted plants, but it's actually a great one along with the neem oil for house plants. Those are great products for house plants. Another great organic bug treatment is Captain Jack's Dead Bug. This is from Bonide. This one you do have to put into a sprayer, but that would be a really good thing for organic gardening. If you don't care so much about the organic gardening and you wanna go with something like a systemic, 
So a systemic, this is one that's sprayed on, but it is drawn in by the plant and it is held there a little bit longer. So you don't have to reapply and it does give it some protective qualities for longer. So the systemic insect control from Bonide, we've talked about this with our roses before. You can spray this on. It stays with the plant a little bit longer. Today though, since we don't have to spray anything, we are going to fertilize. I have our NutriCoat. This is our slow release fertilizer that we use in all of our baskets. And when people ask me, how do you get your baskets to keep looking nice all summer? This is what I'm pointing to. This NutriCoat, you put in a tablespoon per gallon of soil and you just sprinkle it in the top. And then every time you water, a little bit of the fertilizer comes out. So you don't have to mix anything. And some people, you can actually do some of the mixes, the liquid fertilizers, if you, the ones that you do like weekly or bi-weekly. You're welcome to use that with this. You don't actually need to, but you can. And some people like doing that. So by all means, go ahead. But I'm gonna show you how to use this. This is technically a 10 gallon container, but I'm not gonna do 10 tablespoons. I'm gonna do a quarter of a cup, which I believe is maybe four tablespoons. Um, the reason for that is you don't have to use the whole depth of the pot to gauge that. I like to think of how many jugs of gallon milk can fit in here and I think about four would fit. So I'm gonna go with that. So let me get this open. One of the reasons we like the NutriCoat, it's very similar to a product called Osmocote, but we chose NutriCoat instead. And the reason for that is it's a little more stable. So in our weather, you know, we get really warm summer days and the soil heats up. And when that soil hits a certain temperature, it'll release all at once. NutriCoat just has a higher temperature. So instead of hitting like a 60 something, 70 degrees in the soil temperature, you can get a little bit warmer and this won't release all at once. So it stays a little more stable, lasts with the plant and the container a little bit longer. You're just gonna sprinkle it in the top. Spread it around a little bit. I'm gonna kind of shake it down in there. Okay. We'll water that in in just a moment. If you want an organic fertilizer, another good option would be the Espoma Plant Tone. There again, follow the instructions on all of your products that you're using. This slow release fertilizer that we use, we recommend reapplying it every six to eight weeks. So that's not very often, that's a few times a summer. This one, I believe it's a little more often. Make sure you read the labels of all your products. Sprinkle this in and water it in. But this is a good option if you're wanting to go organic. So I'm gonna water this in. You want to fill up the container, whatever container you're trying to water in when you water by hand, fill it up pretty full. This one has a lot of space. Some of them just have a little bit of space, but fill it in and it may even start dripping out the bottom before I'm full, but I'm going to let that soak in. And when you, when something's gotten dry or is starting to get dry, this is actually on an automatic watering system, but with that wind, it just wasn't quite enough. Let that kind of soak down through the soil, do that again. You can do that at least three times on something that's showing damage from having gotten dry. So we're gonna fill this up again. Plus we're just kind of getting our fertilizer to settle down in on the top since I'm gonna be using a drip the rest of the summer. Just about done. Maybe we'll have to put a picture on the Facebook later this summer about how this really does look better later. <laughs> You're probably looking at this thinking, I'm not sure about that, but this really will help it. Fill it up one more time here. All right, that just allows the soil to all of it to take it in. So it's not just running down the sides because when the soil gets dry, it tends to shrink. And when you put water in it, a lot of times it'll just run off the side. So you have to allow it some time to soak in and start absorbing the water. And that's why we like to fill it three times. It's absorbing it, and you can do this even more than three times, absorbing it and working through the whole root ball area. Well, we're done cleaning this up for today. This will look gorgeous and probably just, it'll start looking better in a few days. It'll look gorgeous in just a week or two. I'll take one more off there. And there you have it. Thank you.